Hi, this is Karen. Um, this is my second video. Uh, this is a work in progress um, I call Flying Cowboy. It's something that I've been actually working on and off oh, years, <laughs> very slowly. Uh, I've pulled it out again now that I've got the improved um, computer system. It's kind of a big file. Um, and so my uh, previous computer couldn't handle it anymore, so I hadn't worked on it for quite a while. Um, I think 2008 was actually the last time I opened this up and did something to it, which, so two years ago. Um, so basically, this is a speeded up video. I think this is actually 20 minutes of recording that I've got down to about six. So I'll just kind of ramble while it's going on here. Um, well, the first thing you can see is that I'm, I was working on the wings, and I've got to tell you, wings and I uh, do not get along at all. Uh, this I actually painted on this for about three hours last night with these wings, and this is probably like the fourth version. So um, I think it's finally starting to look kind of how I had envisioned it, so I kept going this morning with it while I recorded this. Um, I'm using the one of the uh, oil brushes in the natural, I think it's in the natural or wet media. Uh, it's a Photoshop brush. It came with Photoshop. Uh, there you can see I decided that he was holding his hat wrong, so I started to redo his, um, I just sketched in, sketched right on top of my layer and redid his thumb. Um, but the main thing, uh, I guess, that might be of interest to anybody watching this particular video is the way that um, as I go through the painting and you'll see it once again when I get back to the wings but um, that big circle that pops up every once in a while that's the color picker uh, in Photoshop CS5 for some reason the default it has this new feature where it brings up this giant ring uh, when you click on the color picker tool and it will um, show you the color that you're picking. And I think it then in the ring, it compares to what color you already had up. So you can see that big circle flashing all over the screen. But if you notice, um, obviously I don't really paint this fast in real life. So you can see how I'm going through and I'm picking up colors from other parts of the painting to try to keep consistent. So I'm not just using like a light brown highlight on these wings. I'm going and I'm picking up um, the cloud cover, the cloud color. So I'll go and I'll take, uh, you could just see it, I flashed over to the <clears throat> left hand side of the screen there for a minute ago and I picked up some of the light light blue that was in the color of the clouds and then to keep it it's from getting too gray I keep flashing over to um, his smaller wing and picking up the brown color again to try to keep that reddish brown going in there so it doesn't get too gray. Um, there, I'm zooming it out to check how things are going. That is a full screen mode with a black background just to see what it looks like, you know, if it was hanging on a wall or something. Um, but there you can see again, I had picked up some of the light blue and I'm hitting the edges of the feathers and the veining of the feathers with that light blue color. It just helps to unify your painting so that your colors are all consistent and in the same you don't want your paintings to have like spot color so that like the wings are brown they're all shades of brown and the sky is blue it's just blue and the grass is green it's just green I mean there's a lot of that going on in this right now but and there are things at the end that you can do that really with um, Photoshop as far as like adjustment layers and filters of color filters that you can do and put on there to sort of help like keep everything in the same tone or add like a say that I decide later that I want this to be more of a green feel or I want everything to have more of a blue cast well I could put a blue adjustment layer over the top of it and monkey around with that so that it gives everything a slight bluish not even like a bluish color but then it would like cool down all my warms so that they all kind of matched if I wanted to do that I don't have to obviously but or if I wanted everything to be warmer an easy fix would be to you know use a warm adjustment layer so you can see that I flipped the canvas that's also really important to do when you're painting uh, when you stare at something uh, for a really long time your brain starts to get used to it and so you start to accept 
the mistakes that you see and when you flip it then um your brain suddenly is like oh what's that and it sees things again in a new way so you can pick up on errors so it's very helpful to constantly flip back and forth as you're working on your painting and that's that's pretty basic advice most people who um, follow will be following me would already know that i guess but um it's good to mention um you know also i do zoom out when you're working like traditionally say like you're working on a real painting well, okay i don't want to say that this isn't a real painting but something you know like an oil painting you would go and stand back from your work about you know a couple feet like you put down your brush and you step back and that was another also way to see how things are working and it's really hard uh, when you're working digitally to get that effect so that's why I zoomed out there and put my highlights back on um, so keep making sure that you don't work zoomed in all the time and that that's it so visit KarenLewis.com for more information thanks